Hey, what's going on Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today has already been an absolutely insane day when it comes to Destiny 2 news. There's so much stuff to cover, so many things have just come out, and yet there's even more stuff for us to talk about. Now, this video is going to be all exotic, baby. We're talking about nothing but exotic weapons. Well, and armors, of course. Some that are new, some that are coming back, and how some masterworks are going to be working on exotic weapons. All that and more. Let's go ahead and dive on into it. Now, of course, earlier today, we had the big Destiny 2 Warmind reveal trailer. I've got other videos covering some of the bigger stuff we learned from that. But after that, of course, game publications went wild posting all of the information that they've got, including a list of exotics, both returning and new, that we'll be getting our hands on when Warmind goes live on May 8th. GameSpot in particular put out a neat little list of some of the exotics we'll be getting back with Destiny 2. This list includes the Apotheosis Veil Exotic Warlock Helmet, Destiny 1 fan favorite the Armamentarium, the Frosties for you hunters, the Ashen Wake, a brand new pair of Titan exotic gauntlets, the Claws of Amkara returning for you warlocks out there, the new exotic submachine gun, the Huckleberry. This thing actually comes with a really cool ability titled Ride the Bull. Love it. It's got an increased rate of fire and recoil while the trigger is held. Kills with this weapon reload a portion of the magazine. Successful melee hits reload the magazine and start a 10 second time. Melee kills extend the timer. While that perk is active, the weapon gains an increased rate of fire, more damage, and improved stats. All of that in one perk on Ride the Bull. This is absolutely insane. So it's a submachine gun that gets faster as you continue to hold down that trigger. If you get kills with it, it restores your magazine. If you get melee kills with it, it restores your magazine and gives you a damage buff and a rate of fire buff with otherwise improved stats. That's ridiculous. And it is exactly the kind of crazy OP sounding exotics I wanted to get my hands on when it comes to Destiny 2. This is actually in a new archetype for submachine guns. It's in a, a 750 RPM tier. We also got to see a submachine gun that's exclusive to the Hive Escalation Protocol uh, Horde Mode on Mars that's also in this archetype. And I mean, if that wasn't good enough for you, this gun also has Rampage on it. So you're going to be stacking up bonus damage as you're also activating the intrinsic perk, getting that faster rate of fire, all of that kind of stuff. The potential of this thing is fantastic. So I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for more information on exactly how that thing handles. But all right, let's move on. Next up, we've got the exotic Warlock Helm, the Oculus Saul. Hmm. Named after that old hive worm god. Wonder what it's gonna do. Then, we've got the return of the sealed Ahamkara's Grasp, the Ophidian Spathe exotic hunter chest piece, the all new Worm Husk Crown, which is an exotic hunter helmet piece. It looks super spooky. Take a look at the gold highlights on the eyes there. Yeesh. Looks like it smells as bad as the normal hive. Some new Titan exotic gauntlets and the Worm God Caress. And as we move through these, you can definitely sense the hive influence on our Guardian's exotic armor. And then, of course, we've got the return of the Suros Regime, complete with what looks to be its old selectable perks in either spinning up, which allowed the gun to get faster as you held down the trigger and continuously fired the weapon, or, of course, Focus Fire, where when you ADS, the weapon slows down its rate of fire, but it increases the damage per shot. Out of that, we've got the return of the always spooky-looking Eternal Warrior Exotic Titan Helm. And then finally, for Warlocks, the Sanguine Alchemy Exotic Warlock Chess Piece. Take a look at this. Coming with the wonderful flavor text, there is power in blood. Not quite sure what exactly it does yet, but with the whole vampire theme of it, I'm really hoping it's something that, like, allows the Devourer ability to be utilized on any Warlock class. Could you imagine something as powerful as Devourer while you're running around in PvP with Stormcaller? For anybody who has trouble closing gaps with that super, that would be a perfect way to handle it. But anyways, that is it for the list of exotics that we got a nice sneak peek at over the course of the day. That's not the end of our conversation about exotics. You might have noticed on exotic weapons, we have a new slot there right next to the infusion option. This is called the Catalyst, and it's basically the way you unlock 
the exotic masterworks for your weapon. That's right, I said unlock. This isn't going to be coming from like a, a random drop system involving like masterwork cores and stuff like that. You're going to have to complete certain challenges, almost kind of like a hidden exotic quest for each exotic weapon out there. And these masterwork changes are significant. In some cases, they completely seem to change the way an exotic weapon works. Now, I haven't been able to get much confirmation of this, but the PlayStation Access Group, who of course was invited out to Bungie and got plenty of footage, they got to speak with some Bungie devs, they hinted that these exotic changes would be really, really big. In particular, they gave the example of the Vigilance Wing. When you finally unlock the exotic masterwork for the Vigilance Wing, it seems like it turns it into a full auto weapon. <laughs> yeah. It turns the Vigilance Wing from a Pulse Rifle into a fully automatic weapon. That's a massive change given how powerful Vigilance Wing is. The other example they gave was for the Crimson. When you complete the exotic masterwork challenge for the Crimson, it increases the gun's range to 100. That's huge. Now, of course, this is just coming from uh, the PlayStation Access Group. I haven't really heard anybody else confirm this. So I'm still trying to take that with a, uh, I'm trying to take that with as, as big a grain of salt as I can. But if that's the kind of changes we can expect with exotic masterworks, that is absolutely unreal. A full auto vigilance wing, max range hand cannon. That's going to completely change the way those weapons work, which lines up with some of the things we've heard from other content creators who said that yes, exotic masterworks are going to completely change the game when it comes to the way that these exotics have been traditionally used, and I'm A-OK -okay with that. Now the really cool thing about exotic masterworks is that you're basically going to have to complete a certain challenge. They will drop, but only after you've completed a certain objective, and that objective may not be readily apparent to you. That's right, earning a masterwork for a hidden exotic requires that you complete some hidden objectives while using that weapon. And those challenges are generally going to be different for each weapon. I do believe the example given for the Huckleberry, uh, the Huckleberry Catalyst states that it's going to be found through heroism in the most challenging adventures, seemingly hinting at you having to complete heroic adventures while using the Huckleberry. The exotic submachine gun, the Risk Runner, says that its catalyst can be found in strikes against the most challenging opponents, seemingly hinting at maybe either Nightfall Strikes or the Heroic Strike playlist. And so you'll have to complete whatever these activities are while utilizing these exotics to unlock the masterworks for them. And then of course activating those masterworks is going to give you that new extra crazy ability. I love the way this sounds. It's absolutely incredible to see this type of change coming to the exotic weapon system. I think this is going to wind up being a great incentive to get people to grind for all of the exotic weapons in the game and to get them to actually play with some of those weapons to unlock these weapon catalysts. But alright, that is not the end of the news today. We have two quick things to go over. First things first, we got another quick view of an exotic weapon that's going to be seeing some changes within 1.2.0. That's right, Bungie took to Twitter once again today to show off the new and improved hard light. The tweet said this, Any damage, any time. A preview of exotic weapon changes coming in Season 3. And they're showing off the newly empowered hard light. Now, we got to see on the stream that they're changing hard light a little bit. They're going to make it so it acts kind of like the Borealis PlayStation exclusive exotic sniper rifle. If you've never used it, you can actually swap the element that's tied to that sniper rifle on the fly. If you've never seen the Borealis, which I wouldn't blame you, it's PlayStation only, it's got the ability Intrinsic, the Fundamentals. If you hold square, you can switch the gun between Solar, Arc, and Void. Well, now that ability is going to be on Hardlight. But that's not the only change it's getting. Hardlight's basic perk allows its shots to over-penetrate targets and, of course, ricochet off of hard sources. It's the big club light gun. Well, now we know that in 1.2.0, Ricocheted rounds, rounds that bounce off of a wall, will now deal two times the normal amount of damage. Yeah, double damage for reflected shots. That's insane. And while that ability is certainly still going to be situational, you know, you're not going to be finding too many people hopefully standing next to too many walls unless you cast them in a hallway, dealing double damage on ricocheted shots, that's pretty freaking cool. And definitely a worthy change for this old Destiny 1 classic. Now, all right. We've already talked a lot about some of the exotic weapons that are coming in Destiny 2, the stuff that's been confirmed and shown off. What about something that potentially hasn't been shown off officially yet? We know that with Destiny 2 Expansion 2 Warmind, a lot of the weapons that we're going to be getting are going to be Warmind themed, like a very special fusion rifle of old. What if I told you 
that if you were to go to the PlayStation or Xbox store for Warmind and go through some of the pictures that they have for the DLC there, you might see a Guardian using the Sleeper Simulant. That's right, Guardians. If you take a look at this picture here, you'll see a Titan utilizing the new armor that comes with Warmind and the Hive Escalation Protocol Horde Mode. But in the background, you can see what looks to be a Warlock holding a very familiar gun from Destiny 1. And yeah, I've got to say, that looks an awful lot like the Sleeper Simulant that so many of us Guardians were losing our minds over back when the Taken King first came out. This legendary monster of a fusion rifle that spawned an entire weapon class of linear fusions in Destiny 2 set the community ablaze with rumors of how we would unlock it when the Ikelos cores and whatnot started dropping out in patrol zones back in Destiny 1. And it looks like we might be getting our hands back on it in Destiny 2. Now, of course, there's been no official confirmation of it, and we're just basing all of this off a of picture. But come on. That looks an awful lot like the Sleeper of old. And with the overall theme of the expansion, of course, centering around the Warmind Rasputin, it makes a heck of a lot of sense for the Sleeper to be returning to our armory once again. I don't know, with all the other crazy confirmations that came on Tuesday, I'm willing to believe in this one just based off of a picture. But that's my thoughts. What are yours? Be sure to let me know what you Guardians think down in the comment section below. Are you excited for some of these changes? Do you think that's the Sleeper Simulant and we'll be getting it back in Destiny 2 Warmind? What about Exotic Masterworks? What would you like to see happen to some of your favorite exotics in the DLC? Be sure to let me know your answers for all that and more down in the comment section below. But that's going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 news that's coming out. We're going to try to stay on top of it, but there is so much stuff to cover. But don't worry, your boy TBL is on the case. That's it for this one. As always, I'm the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.